Hi guys, it's Stephanie, and today I'm going to share with you six tips to help you bond with your service dog, your service dog in training, or your service dog prospect. Now, I have had Dexter for about one month now, and by practicing these six tips, I am super close with him. We are thick as thieves, attached at the hip, whatever other way you wanna describe how bonded we are, that is where we're at right now. And at the end of this video, I will also be sharing two bonus tips, so make sure you stick around and check those out too. And for any products that I mentioned in this video, the link will be down in the description below. So let's move on to the six tips to help you bond with your service dog. So the first tip I have for you guys today is to use a backpack or a sling. Now, if you've seen our videos, you know that we love the sling. Dexter does so well in it. And it's great because if you have a puppy or a smaller dog, it's like holding them all the time, but your hands are still free. And if you have a larger dog that wouldn't fit in a sling, a backpack is another good option too. The other nice thing about a sling or backpack is that it keeps them safe and under control while they are not vaccinated and still being trained their basic obedience training. So when I take Dexter out on training sessions, usually we'll go to a pet friendly store, which isn't as big of a deal now that he's almost fully vaccinated. But when he was younger, it was nice to just keep him in the sling. That way I didn't have to worry about him potentially being exposed to something that could be common in a pet friendly area. It's also good now that he is on leash because usually I will do a training session where he's just on his leash for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then after that, I just pop him back in the sling and I don't have to worry about not being able to do everything I needed to do or grab everything I needed to grab at the store. It's also great to use around the house as well as on hikes or for walks or going to parks and other places other than stores. Now, if your dog is too big for the sling or backpack, you can try the next tip, which is tethering. Tethering is essentially keeping your dog leashed to you. You can do this around the house or out on walks and it's hands-free but keeps them next to you. It also helps them practice getting used to the leash if that's something that's new for them. And it keeps them nearby and within eyesight, which is great if you have a new puppy. Tethering can be done with a hands-free waistband leash or you can just use a metal clip to attach your normal leash to you. Either way will work just as well and will help keep your dog bonded to you. My third tip for bonding with your service dog is to be your dog's primary caregiver. Now I know this seems like kind of an obvious one, but because people with disabilities have service dogs, that's not always an option. But if you can, you should be the primary person to take care of your dog's needs. And the most important one is definitely feeding. If you can be the primary person feeding your dog, they will consistently associate you with good positive things. In the beginning, I do recommend that you feed your dog by hand because it directly associates you with the food and also helps prevent resource guarding in the future. Now, what I like to do with Dexter is I will have him lay down and look at me just for a couple of seconds before I go ahead and feed him because then it practices his impulse control but also teaches him that if he listens to me and gives me good focus, then he will get good things. And that leads us to the next tip for bonding with your service dog, which is training them. Like feeding, training is another good way to encourage a positive association between you and your dog. And if you already have a fully trained service dog, you should still continue to train them because they need the practice and it is good for your bond. If you are working with a puppy or young dog, I do encourage you to keep the training sessions short, ideally somewhere between five and 15 minutes. And if at any point either you or the dog is not having a good time definitely stop and this will assure that you are both having a good time and that training sessions are fun and do strengthen that bond bon. and another way to keep training sessions positive which is actually tip number five for today and that is to play with your dog after training sessions service dogs just like any dog need time just to be a dog to play around to not be training all the time and to rest so if you end your training sessions with a nice play session, that'll be another good way to keep it positive and to give your dog a break. This is also a good opportunity for puppies to get all of their play biting out of the way so that they are less likely to bite things that you don't want them to. It also helps keep them healthy and well exercised and most importantly, helps strengthen the bond between you two. And tip number six for bonding with your service dog or puppy is probably one of my favorites, which is, Snuggle time. 
I personally like to use Dexter's nap time as snuggle time as much as I can, and I definitely recommend that you guys do the same. This is especially great for puppies since they nap all the time, so I like to just take Dexter's nap time to catch up on my TV shows and snuggle him, give him hugs and kisses and every bit of affection that I can. And if I can't, another good alternative is to leave them a nice dirty t-shirt or some sort of article of clothing of yours so that they know your smell and they still feel close to you. And now we are getting to the two bonus tips to help you bond with your service dog. So if you guys have gotten this far and you're enjoying the video, please hit that like button. And if you want more useful service dog videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. So the first bonus tip for bonding with your service dog is to use enrichment toys. Now when I'm talking about enrichment toys, I'm talking about something like a Kong that your dog has to work at to get the food out of. The reason I like to use the enrichment toys is because it helps keep them next to you because it keeps them distracted and just like with feeding and training it's associating you with positive things. So what I like to do with Dexter's Kong is I will fill it with some kibble and some peanut butter then I will just pop it in the freezer for a few hours and pull it out when I am ready for him to use it and it works great. He loves them and it occupies him for a much longer time than just your standard treats and toys. Cold enrichment toys are also very good for teething puppies, which has helped Dexter a lot during his teething phase. And enrichment toys are also very good for some different forms of training. For example, crate training, which is actually super helpful for our final bonus tip for today, which is to spend some time apart from your service dog or service puppy. And the reason that I recommend this is because there will be times, despite the fact that they will probably go most places with you, that they will still need to be separated from you and you don't want that to be a source of anxiety for them. So how do you do this? The first thing I would recommend doing is switching handlers every so often and randomly when you are working with your dog. So if you have a friend or a family member that can just hold on to them for five to 10 minutes, whether it's your going to the restroom or even you are nearby, that's a great way for them to not always expect to be handled only by you. Also using physical barriers to divide you from your dog is another great way to practice the separation. So at nighttime, I highly recommend that you crate train so that your dog is not used to being on you all the time while you are sleeping, as well as if you are not home, you can safely keep them in the crate, or if you need to get things done, it's another safe space that they can stay in where they're not next to you. Another Another way to do this is to utilize physical barriers like baby gates or play pens. And this is a great way to let them safely nap or play with more space than they would get in a crate, but still being somewhat separated from you. And if your dog is often riding with you in the car, I would highly recommend putting them in the back seat or safely in a crate in the back or in a car seat, as opposed to having them on your lap. If you are driving, that is especially not safe and I wouldn't recommend it. But even if you're a passenger, it's nice for them to have a little bit of separation from you as a daily practice. Keep in mind that separation anxiety is extremely common in dogs. And because service dogs tend to get more attention and go more places that we do, they are especially prone to it. So I highly recommend practicing these things to help prevent that from happening. So those are the tips that I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and it really helps spread the word to other viewers. And if you would like to see more videos about tips, tricks, and just general life with a service dog, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.